Oh, not again, I exclaimed as I stumbled over the mangled carcass. This one looked even worse than the last one, trampled and maimed beyond recognition. Was it... <laughs> was it even human? I honestly couldn't tell at first glance. I sure hoped it wasn't, but I kind of knew it was. <sighs> this has to stop, I said, staring at the animals sternly. So, which one of you is it? They all backed away awkwardly, hanging their heads in shame. I could clearly tell that they'd all been a part of it to some extent. Blood dripping from their hooves, fur, skin, snouts, and all. <laughs> Man, the pig even had a crudely severed finger in his mouth, of which he dropped innocently as I gave him a quizzical stare. Definitely human, then. We're doing this again, eh? I said, carefully inspecting the carcass. It was unmistakably a man, maybe in his early thirties, though I couldn't be certain. The face was gone. Simply a hollowed-out skull by this point, and I spotted remnants of brain all over the barn. The throat had been ripped open and the trachea exposed. There were signs of nibbling on it, but the actual tissue damage was negatable. All right, you first then. I pointed at the pig. He averted my gaze as I walked up to him and slowly turned to the wall as I bent down to face him. He definitely had something to hide. Gilbert, I said somberly. Who was it? Is it you? Come on. I know you're terrible with secrets. Just spill it. He didn't flinch. Put on his best poker face. A poker snout. I idly examined his head, hooves, and skin. There'd be some damning evidence, surely. There'd always be something. He had blood and brains on him, some pieces of flayed skin, but his teeth were fairly clean. I quickly ruled him out. He had partaken in the fun, I deducted. But not in the slaying itself. All right, Gilbert, I said. You're off the hook. It's not you. But I know you know who it is. And you know, I know, you know who it is. So let's not play that game. I examined the other animals inquisitively. Could it be the goat? He was looking pretty shady, constantly lurking behind the hay in the back. Or the chicken. She was always the last I'd suspect, but the nibbles on the trachea were beak-shaped, and she had a certain spring in her step, like she was on edge or something. All circumstantial, I know, but perhaps enough for me to start building a case. The horse. She seemed unaffected, indifferent, blasé'd. Much like someone who thought they were getting away with something. I was pacing back and forth thoughtfully, doing the best detective impersonation I could muster, when I spotted faint blue flashes of light appearing in regular intervals on the barn walls. Damn it, they were here already. I'd hoped to smoke out the culprit before they arrived, but now I was forced to leave the animals alone. Who knew what kind of crazy cover story they'd come up with in my absence? You guys behave now, yeah? I whispered hoarsely. We don't want them barging in. I carefully opened the barn door just enough for me to slip out, locked it behind me, and walked briskly towards the police cruiser pulling up in my driveway. 
I sighed deeply as I recognized the driver. <sighs> Stan Colliker, my old high school nemesis. In reality, I considered him a classic double-edged sword. He really despised me, but he was also unbelievably stupid. I greeted him awkwardly as he stepped out of the cruiser. Officer Cockliker, I said. To what do I owe the pleasure? Colliker, he corrected, visibly upset. I'm here about a missing persons case, Ray. Crap, he'd been reported missing already. <sighs> Must have been a local lad then. That could complicate matters. Oh, yeah? I said. Can't help you there, I'm afraid. Haven't seen anyone up here for days. He stared at me silently, raising his eyebrows in erratic patterns. You could practically hear how the rusty gears in his brain desperately tried to string together coherent thoughts. Are you sure? He said. Because there's a car parked just a few hundred yards down the road. Well, shit, that was too damn close. Can't have it that close. That's breaking the rules. I had to stay composed, so I just shrugged and smiled. Don't know what to tell you, I said. We haven't seen anyone. Colliker frowned. Sure is a lot of strange stuff happening around here. A lot of people going missing. Reports of strange noises. Weird lights in the sky. All sorts of crazy shit. Sure is, I smiled. But nothing you can't solve, right? He just kept frowning and staring me up and down. Stan knew I wouldn't hurt a fly. He had no probable cause, no witnesses, no evidence, no nothing. Eventually, he just nodded, accepted defeat, and returned to his cruiser. Oh, one last thing, he said. Your horse. It's running rampant down by the highway. Miss Piggy? Yeah, I don't know the blasted name. The horse. I should have known it was a bad idea to let my daughter name the animals. I just wanted her to connect with them. To feel some kind of ownership, I guess. But man, those names. He slammed the door shut and took off, making sure to screw up as much of my driveway as he could in the process. I rushed back to the barn the second I saw the cruiser disappearing down the road. The animals were all huddled together in the corner by the tractor, and more than likely getting their stories straight. It didn't matter now, though. I knew who the perpetrator was. Aha! I yelled dramatically. Miss Peggy, it was you all along. Shakus! I could hear by Gilbert's nervous squealing that I was right. Miss Piggy hung her head in embarrassment and wandered slowly towards me. She lay down on the ground and I watched as the horse flesh melted and morphed and oozed, eventually revealing the naked body of my daughter. How did you know? Rosalind said, her face all smudged with blood and tiny bits of human flesh. I brushed away the half-digested severed tongue that stuck to her elbow. Miss Piggy, I smiled. She got loose. I covered her in a blanket and walked her back to the house. She had to be exhausted, hunting all night and playing detective and murderer all morning. She loved that game. I wasn't much of a fan, for obvious reasons, but it did have its moments. Remember the rule, I said. Remember what we talked about last time? Always go for the throat? She asked. No, the other rule. 
don't feed at the kill site? No, the other, other rule. Only kill bad people? She licked her lips and gave me that angelic stare. Can't stay mad at that. Yes, I said. Was he? Was he what? She asked. Was he bad? Oh yeah. She beamed. He littered. I wrinkled my nose in discontempt. Littered? Good riddance then, I said as I removed an earlobe stuck in her teeth. Don't eat, please. It's disgusting. And no real nutritional value either. But Auntie says... Ugh, oh, don't listen to that old fruit bat. She's been dead for years. I cleaned her hair as I brushed her teeth. The entrails can really get tangled in there if you aren't careful. And she was a really messy eater. I'd prefer if she stuck to a strictly non-human diet. But like her mother, she just couldn't help herself. That's why we have the rules. Can't survive without the rules. You can't hunt so close to home, I said as I tucked her in. It, it isn't safe. Okay, Daddy, I won't. She smiled. Promise. Want me to read you a bedtime story? Yes. She closed her eyes. But nothing spooky. I don't like spooky. <laughs>